And now we welcome a very special guest to the stage, the chief executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, Mr. John Lee, please. Deputy Director Yin Zhonghua of the Liaison Office of the Central People's Government in the Hong Kong SAR, Commissioner Liu Guangyuan of the Office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Hong Kong SAR, Mr. Eddie Yu, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, good morning and welcome to the Global Financial Leaders Investment Summit, or as I like to call it, the Hong Kong On Stage Again Summit, the back to business stage, the doing business with the world stage, where belong stage, with you, financial investment and business leaders from about 20 countries and economies. Whatever we call it, your presence today puts a heady exclamation point to this welcome gathering, as I'm sure it did last night too. I hope you enjoyed the dinner at the West Kowloon Cultural District's M Plus Museum and the performance from the Hong Kong's own Metropolitan Youth Orchestra. The medley of songs performed by the orchestra brilliantly reflects the spirit of Hong Kong. You'll be hearing more about that spirit throughout the summit. Navigating beyond uncertainty is our theme today. It's a refrain that could well speak for the world at large right now. We are, all of us are, living through uncertain times. The world is working its weary way out from an unprecedented pandemic, now nearly three years in the making and the unmaking of our economies and communities. Political turmoil is rife and geopolitical tensions rising. Inflation is soaring, the global economy weakening, and yet, Despite the troubled world we live in, you apparently don't quite feel it from Hong Kong. Our streets are safe, if more crowded than you may be used to. More to the point, social disturbance is clearly in the past. It has given way to stability, to growing business and community confidence in Hong Kong's future. Law and order has returned the worst is behind us. That's thanks to the long established certainties and unique advantages. I'm talking about the one country, two systems principle that has shaped and rewarded Hong Kong for 25 years now. One country, two systems is the unwavering cornerstone of Hong Kong. As President Xi Jinping said, marking the 25th anniversary of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region's establishment in July, one country, two systems is here to stay, and we must adhere to it in the long run. For good reason, for all kinds of good reasons. Just two months ago, Canada's Fraser Institute again ranked Hong Kong the world's freest economy. Our embrace of capitalism, buttressed by the common law system, remain as strong as ever. We have adopted a low and simple tax regime, safeguarded the free flow of capital, and maintained our long-standing status as a free port. Under one country, two systems, 
the rule of law is sacrosanct in Hong Kong. The judiciary exercises its power independently. Fundamental rights and freedoms, including freedom of speech, of the press, of assembly, are enshrined in and protected by the basic law. The basic law also stipulates that the provisions of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights as applied to Hong Kong shall remain in force. That's not going to change. One country, two systems ensures matchness, connectivity, and opportunity with our country and with the world at large. Hong Kong's seamless connection with the mainland affords Hong Kong advantages available to no other economy. Hong Kong remains the only place in the world where the global advantage and the China advantage come together in a single city. This unique convergence makes Hong Kong the irreplaceable connection between the mainland and the rest of the world. As the center of economic gravity in the world shifts eastward, the mainland, along with fast-growing economies throughout the region, will be a major engine of global growth and an abundant source of economic opportunities. Hong Kong is perfectly positioned to reap that enormous benefits of this irreversible trend. Hong Kong has the talent, infrastructure, and know-how to help mainland enterprises and capital go abroad while attracting international enterprises and capital into the region. That brings me to another certainty. Hong Kong's status as one of the world's leading financial centers and China's major international financial center. In 2020, our financial services contributed 76 billion US dollars. That's 23.4% of our GDP. Hong Kong has been the world's number one IPO venue for seven of the last 13 years. Hong Kong is also one of the world's leading biotech fundraising hubs. The total market turnover on Hong Kong Stock Exchange last year reached a record 5.2 trillion US dollars. Our banking system held assets equivalent to about 9.4 times of our GDP in 2021. Last year, our insurance sector ranked first in Asia and second in the world, with assets under management of more than 4.5 trillion US dollars. Two thirds of that funding was sourced from non-Hong Kong investors. Hong Kong is also a leading bond hub in Asia. And for the past six years in a row, we've been the world's largest center for arranging Asian international bonds. We were the first Asian government to issue 30-year and 20-year green bonds denominated in US dollars and euros, respectively. These are not just numbers. They demonstrate Hong Kong's immense strengths when it comes to financial services. We were, we are, and we will remain one of the world's leading financial centers. And you can take that to the bank. Hong Kong is certain to scale new heights. Charting a brighter tomorrow for Hong Kong is the theme of my policy address, which was delivered just two weeks ago. In it, I introduced a series of major initiatives to raise our competitiveness, create impetus for growth, and expedite Hong Kong's progress to prosperity. I should highlight that the Hong Kong SAR government, under my leadership, will take a result-oriented approach. We will focus on the outcome of policies rather than laboring away on concepts and procedures. For businesses and investors, that means we will act as leader 
enabler, facilitator, and even partner in development. We will be proactive in attracting strategic enterprises and top talents to Hong Kong. How will we accomplish that? Let me highlight three of our new initiatives. First, we will establish a new Hong Kong Investment Corporation to optimize the use of Hong Kong's fiscal reserves and steer economic development. A co-investment fund of 30 billion Hong Kong dollars, equivalent to 3.8 billion US dollars, will be set up to attract companies to Hong Kong and invest in their business. Second, we will put in place an array of new initiatives to help enterprises, investments, and innovative professionals build a base, a home in Hong Kong. Our new and dedicated office for attracting strategic enterprises will offer special facilitation measures and tailor-made services to strategic enterprises from all over the world. Third, we will provide one-stop service for incoming talents through our new talent service unit. A new top talent pass scheme will also be introduced to entice talented professionals from around the world to pursue their careers in Hong Kong. That includes working graduates from the global top 100 universities and those earning over 320,000 US dollars a year. Hong Kong has much to offer the world. We are blessed with traditional strengths. Located at the heart of Asia, we are within five hours flying time of half the world's population. We have the world's business air cargo hub. We are rated amongst the easiest places in the world to do business. We are one of the world's most preferred seats of arbitration. We are the only Asian city with five universities in the world's top 100. Hong Kong features prominently in China's national strategies, including the national 14th five-year plan, the Greater Bay Area Development, and the Belt and Road Initiative. The 14th five-year plan supports Hong Kong's development in eight major areas. These include, for example, reinforcing our position as an international financial, trade, shipping, and aviation center. One area I'm pleased to highlight is the development of Hong Kong into an international innovation and technology hub. Before year's end, we will publish our INT development blueprint for the future. It will cover major INT policies, including infrastructure, reindustrialization, our talent pool, and the development of a smart city. Then there is the Northern Metropolis. Our newest growth engine is situated in Hong Kong's Northern region. It will take up an area about one third the size of Hong Kong and house about one third of our current population. The Northern Metropolis will become a new international INT city an urban rural development featuring quality housing, green and sustainable surroundings, prominent arts and cultural clusters, and a healthy balance between work and lifestyle. Its far-reaching potential will radiate beyond its geographical boundary with Shenzhen. It will create boundless opportunities with Guangdong while contributing to the overall development of the Greater Bay Area. We will also enable the continued growth of our cultural industries. Central to that is Hong Kong's rise as an internationally recognized East Meets West Arts and Culture Hub, a sophisticated global city offering world-class arts, entertainment, and lifestyle 24-7. Yes, we are opening once again for the pure business of pleasure. 
the pleasure of hosting and entertaining a world of visitors and travelers, arts and culture devotees, food, wine, and pub aficionados, theme park enthusiasts, sports and leisure lovers, holiday hikers, and more. You had a taste of our East meets West art and culture last night. I invite you back to linger at the Hong Kong Palace Museum. Opened in July, it features more than 900 dazzling pieces of artifice and treasure from the world famous Palace Museum in Beijing. And you want to stick around for the weekend and the return after three long years of the Hong Kong Sevens. Yes, Rugby too is back, promising a long and memorable weekend of hard hits and roaring referee on the pitch and in the stands. Join us, feel the spirit of Hong Kong on this marvelous Sevens weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, as have many other major cities worldwide, Hong Kong has been through ups and downs over the years, but our resilience remains remarkably unmatched. Consider, since 1997, we have overcome such major challenges as the SARS outbreak in 2003, the global financial crisis in 2008, most recently, disturbances and violence in 2019. Yet, our financial system has never buckled, never wavered. Like Hong Kong itself, it remains strong, sure, and enviably secure. Hong Kong always bounces back, better than ever. We have full confidence in its tenacity and its future. We are already seeing encouraging rebound as we will continue to lift our COVID restrictions. I would like to thank the Hong Kong Monetary Authority for organizing this seminal three-day Global Leaders Investment Summit, or the Hong Kong On Stage Again Summit. I know you will make the most out of the panel sessions and discussions. After all, they are led by some of the world's brightest minds in finance. And I wish you all the best of Hong Kong's business and investments in the coming year. Before I close, I would like to tap into your success stories. Ladies and gentlemen, you are among the world's most successful business people and investors. You know full well the equation to the most promising investments, opportunity and timing. Good investors focus on tomorrow as much or more than today. They look for prospects touching bottom for opportunities soon to soar. Look at Hong Kong. I can tell you, the worst is behind us. Opportunity and timing are right here, right now in Hong Kong. This is the moment you have been waiting for. Go for it. Get in front, not behind. Thank you. Thank you all.